And you've got to ask yourself this question. How can I be fully engaged with what's happening right now? How can I be fully engaged with what's happening? And the good news is I'm not preaching a one-size-fits-all. I'm not preaching that you need to sing every single song on the top of your lungs or you need to take like some really awesome hardcore notes or you need to meet every single person here, shake everybody's hand. No. You can be fully engaged in what's happening here without ever opening your mouth. You could be fully engaged without taking copious notes. You could be engaged without meeting every single person. The goal is for you to learn how you personally, like you personally, are designed and how you can engage in that way, whatever that looks like. Because it's going to be different for everybody. Now, for the next few minutes, as we're starting to close, I want to talk to two different groups of people. First, we're going to talk to uh, people who are just trying, kind of trying this God thing out, who are dipping their toe in the water and seeing what God's about. And then we'll talk a little bit to believers, people who are following Christ. Um, so what does it mean to be engaged for someone who's just kind of dipping their toe in and checking things out? Um, I, think, I think your challenge is simple. It's taste and see. Taste and see. I'm not asking you to take everything wholesale and jump right into the deep end. If you want to, that's cool. I mean, that's not a bad way to do it either. But I'm asking, I think your challenge is to taste and see. And if you've ever seen a kid experience ice cream for the first time, that's what I'm talking about. Like, uh, I remember so clearly on Addison's, our older child, on Addison's first birthday, um, we were walking around Burkdale, and Aubrey had ducked in a gymboree, and we had gotten um, uh, ice cream at, at uh, Killwinds or something, and I was sitting there, and she was just kind of looking at it. And if you've never had kids, kids have this thing where, like, if they've never tried something before, they're really, like, cautious about it. Like, they're like, what are you trying to feed me? Like, what are you doing to me? And I'm like, it's ice cream. What are you talking about? This is great. And we haven't really given her sugar or anything at that point. And I'm a dad, so it's my job to give her sugar. So, uh, so we're sitting there, and I give her this tiny little scoop. She kind of looks at it, and I'm like, just, like, try it and get it. And she tried it, and her face just, poof, her mind exploded. She had no clue. But how do you, okay, t- tell me this. How do you explain ice cream to someone? Try it. Taste it. This is really good. You should have some. That's tasting and seeing. And I promise you, if you take a step, just take a step and find a way to try. Like maybe it's just singing along with the words. Maybe it's seeing what happens when you meet some people and really dig in. Maybe it's seeing what happens when you apply some of what we're teaching to your life. Just taste and see. Because I guarantee you, if you take a step, God's going to meet you there. 100%. And when you take a step, it's an act of faith, right? It's, it's growing your faith step by step by step. And like I said, he's going to be faithful to meet you there. So taste and see. Now, for those who have faith, the, the, the challenge is, is different, but just as simple. Don't be a spectator, be a participant. Don't be a spectator, be a participant. Being a spectator is super dangerous for your spiritual life. Like, really not good. It's like, if you've ever, I had a thing for a while, like, I sat for a long time, like, I was at a desk job or stuff, something for too long, and, like, my sciatic nerves, like, started acting up, and I couldn't walk. Like, when I first got here at Journey, I was like this for, like, a month. So, like, sitting and watching and not doing anything is super dangerous for you. And I think this quote says a lot. This is kind of like a, you know, exaggerated view of it, but I think it kind of gets a lot uh, across. So, so let's read this together. It says, <clears throat> Worshippers see it as a responsibility of those on stage to provide an engaging, meaningful, and entertaining show, while it's the worshiper's job to give an instant review of the worship service as they pass through the receiving line after worship. Doesn't it seem odd for people to make evaluation or evaluative comments like, good sermon, pastor, or I enjoyed the service this morning about the worship of the living God? That's a good point. Uh, He finishes by saying, on many a Sunday, after concluding the morning's message, when I glance in the direction of the choir, I expect to see them raise cards from their laps, writing the sermon, 9.9, 9.5, and so on. I mean, that's silly, but it paints a really, like, nasty picture of what could be. If we went full spectator, that's what happens. And maybe it's not on purpose. Let me rephrase that. I bet you it's not on purpose. We're just trained. We spectate everything in this world. We go to the movies. We go, we watch TV. We go and do other things. We're not really engaging. We're not doing a whole lot of stuff, but we have to engage and become participants when it comes to our time here on Sundays. And it's so much better to be a participant than it is to be a spectator. It's so much better. For instance, spectators move on, but participants stay and grow. Spectators don't get the benefits of stuff over time because they come, they get their thing, they're gone, right? They spectate, they're gone. 
participants stay. They grow deep roots. They see growth over time. Spectators enjoy brief gratification. That they, they eat the thing and they go. They get the thing. They come, they get the thing, they go. Uh, participants experience lasting, or excuse me, the participants experience last and it changes them. So over time they see growth because they're engaged in what's going on. Spectators get what they paid for, but participants reap the rewards. So the guy who pays for a ticket to see a movie, what does he get? He gets, he gets a two-hour movie, and that's cool. That's a good, I mean, cool, and he goes on with his life and his days, and he probably doesn't remember it in a week, and that's fine. But the guy who takes the time to work on the movie, to learn the different aspects of his job, to be involved in the process of what it is to make the movie, that guy's going to change and grow and have an experience that he can take with him. You see what I'm saying? He reaps the rewards of being a participant. When we look in Scripture, we don't see believers pictured and dictate, or, or, or shown as spectators. That's just not how it is. It was the assumption that you're a participant. And almost always they're a full-on participant. 